Leo Shirashkin has a PhD in forestry for the University of Missouri and a master's degree in natural resources from Indiana University of Bloomington. He's currently a forester for a non-timber forest products company, PineNut.com, and uh, hmm, uh, Goods from the Woods. He previously headed a program of World Wildlife Fund in Russia, was editor of Russia's largest environmental magazine, and published over two dozen books and articles on pine nuts, which he's been busy working with for over a decade. That might explain something. I think I heard something about pine and nut vodka or something, so maybe that's the, uh, the connection there. He has spoken on pine nuts um, in four, on four continents, from Australia and Japan to America and England, and we're very happy to have him with us this afternoon. Thanks. Uh, I'd like to start by acknowledging the Forest Product Society and the United States Forest Service and everybody who contributed putting together this uh, impeccably organized event. Thank you so much for putting it together and for facilitating my coming here. Uh, I promise that over the next 20 minutes you will hear about some uh, forest products that you never even imagined could exist. So your time won't be wasted. And also I would like to thank the co-author of uh, today's presentation, uh, Penny Frazier, the founder of Goods from the Woods Pinot.com, who for over two decades has been promoting American pine nuts and showing the tremendous economic, social and cultural potential uh, that these trees call. We all know a uh, saying that money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, but of course, those who are into forest products uh, know better. What else could money grow on if not trees? Really? <laughs> and uh, uh, with pinion pines, it's uh, really the case. Just look at the seedlings that I brought. They just sprouted a month ago. And this tiny, you can barely see them, these tiny trees already start producing quarters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's another one. Okay, give them some time and they will start producing $100 bills. Uh, some time ago, I uh, worked on an organic fruit farm in the state of Hawaii. And the owner of the farm was telling us, the workers, see this papaya hanging on the tree? It's not a papaya, it's a three dollar bill. You go and harvest it for me. Uh, in this respect, uh, uh, American pinion pine trees, uh, they are a veritable producer of uh, cash. But, of course, money is not everything that happens in life, uh, that matters in life. And in this respect, uh, American pine nut trees, uh, the pinions, do not disappoint either. Uh, in one of the books that I edited, there is a very good saying that one kernel of uh, a pine nut tree has more energy in it than all the uh, artificial power installations put together. Is it true or not? Well, of course, the living pine nut seed uh, has uh, the energy, the spirit, that uh, we cannot artificially recreate. And, you know, on the spiritual plane, uh, pine nut trees are like nothing else you've ever encountered. Pine nut spirits is uh, something <laughs> absolutely extraordinary. Uh, you can make at least three different kinds of uh, a very flavorful vodka with it. Uh, you can use cones to infuse vodka and give it this strong piney flavor. You can use pine nuts. Or you can use what would normally be considered a waste product, uh, the pine nut shells. Our company has been successful in selling pine nut shells, this waste product of shelling pinion pines, five dollars per four ounce bag and we sell of all pine nut shells we have and we process tens of thousands of nuts every year uh, 
high-end restaurants in New York City buy shells to infuse vodka for their clients. And not only that, if they use cones to infuse vodka, guess what you end up with after you drain vodka? You end up with pickled cones. <laughs> no kidding there. You open the cone and lo and behold inside there are pickled, vodka pickled pine nuts. Uh, you take these nuts, you shell them, and you put them on a, a toothpick and make small barbecue-like press <laughs> of uh, um, vodka uh, pickled pine nuts for their clients. We have uh, it, several Manhattan restaurants that do that for um, their clientele. Not only that, after you extracted the pine nuts from this cone, uh, should you happen to have a, a toothache, the traditional use in Russia and in other cultures of the uh, pinion cones was to put it on your tooth if you have a toothache and just keep it there. Uh, of course, this statement was not evaluated by uh, FDA, but uh, uh, resins certainly have very strong antimicrobial properties. And I have a number of people who can vouch for the effectiveness of uh, pinion pine cones, pickled in vodka, of course, uh, to treat uh, uh, toothaches. So if they are uh, so good at uh, alleviating tooth pain, of course, you can make toothpaste out of it. Uh, you may not be aware, but there is a significant American market for mm, pine-flavored uh, toothpaste. But nobody's manufacturing it in this country yet. So all the pine-flavored toothpaste on the American market is currently being imported from Russia. But it's an extremely easy process and it would utilize, again, what would be otherwise lost as a byproduct of harvesting and shelling uh, pinion pine nuts. Uh, talking about vodka, uh, uh, of course, a picture is worth uh, a hundred words, but one sip of vodka is uh, worth a hundred pictures. So <laughs> after the presentation, starting five o'clock at the exhibition hall, uh, the pineup.com uh, table, there will be free uh, sampling of pineup vodka and uh, different kinds of American grown uh, um, pineups for your enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can make a toothpaste with uh, different ingredients. With uh, the resin you get f as a byproduct of uh, uh, trashing, trashing cones, with pine nut oil, of which I will talk about later, and even with pine nut uh, flour. All of these are available on the U.S. market, but not being manufactured with American companies yet again. Never mind, if you want to try pine nut flavored toothpaste right now, you can take a few drops of pine nut vodka and put it on your uh, toothbrush and with any other choice of uh, uh, toothpaste and uh, give it a try. It's a very satisfying experience because uh, in different cultures the similarities are astounding. In American, the Native Americans and the indigenous tribes of Siberia were all using the uh, sap and the resin of pine nut producing pine trees uh, as chewing gum. In Russia, again, this chewing gum is commercially produced based on pine nut resin and uh, on folk medicinal uses of pine nut resin to help with uh, toothache and just to maintain healthy teeth. Uh, again, these products are available here in America, but they are being imported from elsewhere. Another use for pine nut resin is incense. Uh, with pinions especially, uh, the cones uh, are very <laughs> fragrant, so you can use uh, them to scent almost anything. Uh, uh, 
one ounce of uh, resin from pine nut cones are retails for for five dollars, five dollars per ounce, and is being used uh, for manufacturing pine scented <coughs> soaps, shampoos, uh, all kind of beauty products, uh, as well as uh, uh, incense to burn. I was doing with pine nut cones, I was sending my business cards with them. <laughs> so this way, uh, any potential acquaintances, they can locate my cars by the sense of smell. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can put it uh, in a wardrobe to scent your linen and your clothing. So it's a very powerful and uh, many people find it a very pleasing uh, scent and is an alternative to chemical uh, uh, scenting agents. Okay, but of course we uh, know pine nuts mostly as uh, food. And uh, American pinyon pine nuts are the most productive pine nut tree of all of the 20 plus species uh, known internationally. And uh, you can uh, eat them raw and then you can even um, harvest and market the cones. You don't need even to extract the nuts because the longer you keep the nut in the cone, the more flavorful it will be. The cone is the natural packaging, and the moment you remove uh, the seed from the cone, uh, you remove the, all the resins that protect it from germs and from spoiling. So there is a big market of people who value this strong pine nut flavor of fresh pine nuts that were kept in cones for as long as possible. And uh, during the harvest season, uh, we are successfully selling uh, cones with seeds inside uh, retail for $150 uh, a bushel. This is probably the highest value you can get because you do not invest anything even in processing it, just picking it. Uh, then the same product uh, can be as raw in shell after you remove the cone. It can be shelled. It can be dried, air dried, dehydrated. It can be roasted. The possibilities are endless. Then it can also be processed into uh, pine nut oil. Depending on the species, you will have anywhere between 40 to 70 percent oil content in the seed of uh, uh, pine trees. Uh, guess what? The oil is even more valuable than the pine nuts. On the American market, the imported pine nut oil retails from 250 to 350 dollars per liter. It's very high-end uh, oil that's not only used as a very expensive and high-end uh, uh, food to put on salads and to be used uh, in light cooking, but also is touted with uh, a myriad of uh, health, benefit, uh, health benefits. In Russia, it's a veritable uh, cure-all, and uh, there are so <coughs> many things that it's been prescribed for, uh, even by mainstream uh, uh, physicians. Uh, the pine nut oil is also used uh, uh, in as a FDA approved uh, weight loss drug. It would seem counterintuitive that such a high calorie product would be used as a uh, weight loss drug, but the thing is that this food is so satisfying that it suppresses the appetite dramatically. So taking one teaspoon of pine nut oil uh, will you, and you will feel full for the rest of the day, literally. It's a very high energy food on which much of the uh, wildlife in uh, Siberia and also in the cl cold climates of North America uh, thrive on. Uh, you can um, use it in uh, uh, um, beauty products and as a very high-end uh, massage oil. Uh, so pineas can give you the complete uh, spa experience. <laughs> they can even warm you. Uh, when you remove the, uh, the uh, shell from the nut, there is not just the kernel inside, there is the thin uh, brown membrane that surrounds the nut. Guess what? Uh, you remove this membrane by a strong airflow, 
Do you throw it away? No. You use it to stuff pillows, um, uh, animal, to toy animals, uh, comforters, the king size comforters here on the American market, uh, stuffed with the chaff, again, the waste byproduct of shelling peanuts, retails from $450. And they're mm, oftentimes out of stock, so you need to pre order to guarantee uh, that you can get one. So, a good, another good thing about these comforters and pillows is that because the chaff contains our oil, it goes rancid after six months, so you need to replace your comforter every six months <laughs> every year. Uh, so you have uh, you know, an unending stream of customers who come uh, back to buy more. Uh, I own the pillow like that, and I must tell you that during these six months I had the best dreams because it has this pine fragrance. So it literally, it feels like you're sleeping in the middle of the pine forest and uh, it fills the entire bedroom with this fragrance of uh, uh, pine trees, really spectacular. Now you know why there is a, a, a term called comfort food. It is because you can make comforters as a byproduct. Uh, you can use our uh, pinion pine, nuts, uh, pine nut trees as ornamental trees. Uh, you can use pine nuts as pet food, and uh, believe it or not, even though it retails for $20 and up uh, in shell retail, uh, there is quite a bit of people who are prepared to pay this money to buy this food for their favorite birds, or uh, for example, the expensive uh, parrots who just uh, love the pinion climate. And uh, uh, cones also can be used as decoration. They are used in crafts as a air freshener, as a fire starter, natural fire starter. They burn very well, they have a lot of resin in them, and uh, not only that, they release all this fragrance of Christmas when they burn. So uh, we are selling the small box like that for $10 uh, plus shipping uh, during the Christmas season for people to, uh, to burn and use as a fire starter. And you can even use small cones for labels, pins, and take a sniff whenever you need to be refreshed a little bit. <laughs> Not only that, you can make essential oil almost out of every bit of the pinion tree. You can make essential oil, distill the cones, you can distill the shells after the nuts have been removed. You can distill wood of pinion wood, uh, of pinion trees, uh, and you can distill needles, foliage. So again, on, here in America, there are websites that sell uh, at least four different kinds of essential oils produced from pine nut producing trees, all of them imported from overseas. The interesting thing that many of you, I think, might be um, <coughs> curious to see is uh, the pine nut paneling. After you have the empty cone, you can make a pulp out of it, just grind it completely, and because it has resins, it will be plastic like crafting clay, so they mold it and let it dry, and it becomes almost like cork board in texture, but also has this added advantage of being very fragrant. So these are pine nut cork board is being used the same way as cork board is used. Anything from specialty paneling to uh, pads for computer mouse. Mice. Mice or mouses? Mice. For computer mice. <laughs> okay, so when you extracted the oil... Oh. Okay, so again, the question is, okay, all these fine outlandish products, but is there really a market for them here in this country and elsewhere? You know what? There is globally a shortage of pine nuts. So no matter how much you can produce, you will find a market. Uh, we have removed ourselves from uh, our natural environment so completely that we are now willing to pay big money 
for the texture, for the fragrance, and for the flavors that remind us of the rich experiences that our ancestors had. Here is what is happening with America's pine nut imports. As you move along the value added chain, the pine nuts become so valuable that you don't really want to sell the raw product, you want to process it. And this is what is happening. China used to be the largest exporter of pine nuts to the United States to the point that 90 plus percent of pine nuts consumed in this country were coming from China. Guess what? Here is the trend over the past four years. Uh, the volume, the physical volume of exports from China to America has dropped by 86% over the course of the same uh, of uh, these four years. Uh, and the prices have increased. Is it because of the economic hardship and the slowdown of the American economy? No. This is because of the global competition. When uh, I grew up in Russia, pine nuts were something like one dollar a pound at most. Now, the last time I visited, uh, they were more expensive than they are here, twenty dollars a pound plus. Um, so there is no more incentive to export it to the more developed American market because there are all these value-added opportunities that are being uh, fully exploited uh, in China and Russia and in European countries as well. So the future of American pine nut supply is certainly in uh, appreciating the value and uh, uh, harvesting native American pinion pine nuts. There is more to it than just the pinion pine nuts. So here is a map of the ranges of uh, seven different pine nut species uh, that produce edible nuts, but of, the, but of those, uh, pinion pines are of the utmost importance, still occupying some 36 million acres uh, of land throughout the Great Basin. Okay, so once you uh, start moving into the value added pine nut processing, you can uh, sell not just the pine nuts, you can sell what people can use to grow their own pine nuts. So there is a market now for seedlings, uh, there is a market for mycorrhiza inoculants to inoculate the roots of uh, pinion pine trees to let them grow better. There is a market for cones sold uh, for seeds in a nice packaging, gift packaging to give a gift of a cone that you can plant and plant your family tree. And uh, even this is not all. You extracted the oil, you are left with pine nut meal, pine nut flour. And this has all the same uses as a regular flour and also because it has high oil and uh, a uh, high protein content. It is uh, used as a dairy substitute. You can make uh, anything out of it that you could make out of uh, milk or cream, including ice cream. Uh, this is the thing that I indulge in every time I go to Russia because pineapple ice cream is incredible. It has this uh, uh, you know, richness of uh, nut flavor, and at the same time, it you can recognize that it is uh, an ice cream. So if you put some pine nut vodka on top of it, it's just <laughs> <laughs> This is something I baked here a week ago: uh, pumpkin bread uh, using pine nut flour and pine nuts uh, as a substitute for uh, any other kind of flour. Okay, you can use it as mulch. To produce candy, the shell can be uh, used to produce charcoal of very high quality used in the pharmaceutical industry. You can go into pine nut tourism. Imagine building a small cabin somewhere up uh, in the mountains where people can go and stay in a um, cabin built out of pine nut uh, uh, small diameter logs. Uh, with uh, pine nut comforters, with uh, pine nut buns for breakfast, and pine nut coffee, and pine nut vodka, and a sauna with massage with pine nut oil. And, uh, 
uh, candy made, made, uh, made with pine nuts and uh, uh, you can uh, go and collect your own pine nuts and press your own pine nut oil to take uh, with you home. This is the kind of uh, uh, tourist uh, activities that are now flourishing in <coughs> Russia. You can go into the tiger and they'll do exactly what I described, give you the experience of how much this one tree can provide. Everything, shelter, food, warmth, you name it, all our needs can be met. But I can already say, but what about the pine nut footwear? And right, <laughs> there is a folk medicinal use of pine nuts. If you have a cold, heat some pine nuts, put them in socks, and put your feet inside the socks, so to warm up your feet. So some uh, entrepreneurs in Russia started manufacturing pine nut insoles. You put them in your footwear, and they give you a massage as you walk, and uh, also help you stay healthy. There are even pine nut uh, prayer beads that are available on the market. But I saved the best things for the very end. I have three more minutes, and these are going to be the most interesting three minutes of the whole talk. <laughs> In different cultures throughout the world, <coughs> pine nuts were considered to be a very strong aphrodisiacs. <laughs> very strong aphrodisiacs. Uh, in records as far back as the 18th century, there are records that they were being used to promote uh, male virility and still being used to the same ends. Just look at me. When I started working with Pinas, I had one child. And now I have four and counting. <laughs> and I know several people in the Pinat industry who, who have uh, 20 plus children. <laughs> okay, job creation. 36 million acres of pine nuts, and uh, one person can uh, pick one acre per day. So how many jobs it could create? And this is just for picking, I'm not even talking about processing. If you don't want to go into the woods or, uh, and get your hands dirty, you can write books about them. You can <laughs> study them. Uh, I'll share with you a one million dollar grant proposal for free. Train Clark's Nutcrackers to bring you pine nuts. <laughs> We've successfully done it with bees, with honey bees. One nutcracker can collect $450 worth of pine nuts in a season. So even if you are successful in training 50 birds, like it, it will be better than life insurance. And I imagine, you know, making the kind of the beehives up on the roof of your house where they will deposit the, um, the nuts that they bring. And there is a conduit going to a kitchen and there is a jar which is constantly being replenished by pine nuts. So you don't even go, need to go to the grocery store. Okay. And uh, you can write books about them. There is a best-selling, internationally best-selling uh, book series that sold 11 million copies about how valuable pine nuts are and what spiritual and economic and cultural value it has. Uh, I was editor of the English translation. It sold 500,000 uh, 500, copies, primarily by word of mouth. And I thank you so much for your attention. And if I come to this conference next time, I will present even a more controversial talk, uh, po Poison Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm serious because pine nuts are the top of the iceberg. Our uh, company is certified organic processor of 250 different species of wild growing plants in uh, uh, Missouri Ozark. Thank you for your attention. Unfortunately, we don't have any time for questions, but I would bet that almost everyone in this room is going to, at 5 o'clock is going to be lined up um, for, for try some, try some Thank you very much.